Oh my gosh, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. If you follow any Tesla on the internet right now, it's all Giga Rodeo and Cyber Texas and big hats. Oh, the big hats. And 17 minute videos that appear to be about one sentence from the presentation. But I'm not here to talk about those Tesla things. I'm here to talk about a Tesla thing that even Tesla forgot about, at least for 18 months. What's it like to get solar installed on your house and was a Tesla Powerwall a good idea? How long does it take? Is it an easy process? Is it even suitable for my house and property? And when does it pay for itself? Today, I will take you through the entire installation process, the do's and don'ts, the total cost, the tax credit, and the loan application for my solar array that I actually put in my yard, not on my house. Plus, I'll show you my Tesla Powerwall. I'll show you how it works and what benefits it has compared to just getting solar by itself. It's been a long time coming and I can't wait to break it all down for you. But first, subscribe down below so you don't miss any updates I have on my array. And let's get right to it. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you. Let's start from the very beginning. I contacted Solar Holler, a solar installation company, on September 30th, 2020, and asked about getting a ground-mounted system. I had a virtual appointment scheduled, which was subsequently canceled, but they got me a proposal about a week later. It was for a rooftop setup. So I asked again if I could do a ground mount. I'm sure you're curious as to why I would get a ground mount instead of rooftop solar. Stay tuned, I'll get into that. Oh, and did you know you can support me on Patreon at a slash 304? Stay tuned to the end, we've got a giveaway for our first 25 patrons. Would you go for a ground mount or just keep the panels on the roof? Let me know in the comments. By December 14th, I had a proposal. 14 panels, 5.32 kilowatts, and a Tesla Powerwall 2 with no money down and a 10 year warranty on the labor, 25 year warranty on the hardware. Also notice I paid zero dollars in roofing costs. Now I started my nightmare with Mosaic. It took nine days and three different sets of documentation to complete the loan application. But I finalized and signed all the documents, all done. I just needed to do a welcome call. On this call, Mosaic let you know that you had just agreed to pay them 30% of the loan amount to keep your standard payment at the amount that was set. If you didn't pay the full 30% within 18 months of the date of your solar activation, your loan would be restructured and would switch to a higher interest rate, ultimately increasing your payment as well. So I recorded my voice on the line saying I understood and I was approved and ready to start my installation. Keep in mind the amount of the tax credit was 26% for solar in 2022, so 4% was gonna be out of pocket no matter what. At least I didn't have to start paying until the install was complete. Next, I got my permits from Mon Power, and I waited for my install to start. The date is now January 19th, 2021. I was told just days later that my power wall was on back order until June of 2021, but hey, no big deal. They could still do the solar so I could benefit right away from the energy I captured. On March 8th, 2021, just over five months after I first contacted Solar Holler, my install was started. It was a two day job, and the crew was friendly and fast. What does your solar array look like? At me on Twitter at a slash 304 or tag me on Instagram at Adam and Connie so I can check it out. Also, what drawbacks come with having solar installed? Let me know down below. A month later, April 8th, 2021, my exterior electrical hardware was installed on another two day install and my system was ready to activate. On April 9th, right before the guys were all done with the wiring, a code enforcement guy pulls up to my house, jumps out and demands to see my Permit. He tells me it's illegal to have any of this done without a permit. I told the code enforcement officer I had all the permits and they were on file with the city and he demanded to see them immediately. I asked him if somebody called him. He didn't respond and walked over to my side yard to investigate my panels, which at this point had been in my yard for a month. The permits were electronically sent to me, so I frantically searched my email while trying not to show the catastrophic rush of anxiety I was experiencing while he got on the phone. About five minutes later, he emerged from my side yard after doing what looked like a kicking of the tires, so to speak, of my solar setup, very obviously having no idea how it worked. He said I had all the permits and apologized and drove away. 
The installers from Solar Holler said they'd never seen anything like this before. It took another month after my wiring was complete for my power company to install a meter that was compatible with my panels, so around the 1st of May, 2021, I started harvesting sunlight. I made my first payment to Mosaic just a few days later. Then I got an email at the end of May saying I hadn't made my payment for May. I called Mosaic Customer Service. They said I was almost 10 days late on a payment I had made a couple weeks prior. Turns out their billing hadn't finished creating my loan profile or something like that, and they assured me that they would fix the problem. I didn't believe them, so I just made another payment. While my panels and hardware were being installed, Tesla announced they would no longer sell you a Powerwall if you didn't also purchase solar from them directly. This was concerning. I contacted Solar Holler several times and it was literal ghosting for about a month. I finally called so many times one day that they tracked my project manager down and she called me back. I told her I knew it wasn't her fault and that I think it's bad for everyone that a local installer like Solar Holler can't sell a high demand product like a Powerwall. But I needed to know something. This radio silence was worse than denial or acknowledgement. It was neglect. She said most people that had orders waiting hadn't contacted them yet about Tesla canceling third-party installs of the Powerwall. I told her it was all the more reason to provide some kind of communication. I was freaking out myself. Did I just start paying on a loan for something I was never going to get? The next week, all of the Powerwall customers got an email from the CEO offering an option to get an Enphase battery instead at a $2,000 discount. No way, I thought. No. I was getting my Powerwall no matter how long I had to wait. And boy, did I wait. 11 more months. But it was worth the wait. Solar Holler delivered a top quality install. The Powerwall had to be installed in a finished room. Her regulations. Luckily, I had this closet in my basement that looks like it was made for a power wall. The installers were five star, and my experience overall was too. Oh, and here's a fun fact. First Tesla I ordered was the power wall. The second Tesla I ordered was the Model Y. The third Tesla I ordered was the Model 3, and they were delivered in opposite order. I waited two weeks for the Model 3, I waited six months for the Model Y, and I waited 18 months for the Tesla Powerwall. But at least we got one. There's that too. If you want a Powerwall at the current time, you have to go through Tesla itself. We were so lucky to have placed this order when we did. It was time to do the last bit of paperwork, which was file my taxes. Our total credit was $7,525. 5,841 for 2021 and 1,684 for 2022. But I've still got to whittle away a total of 30% by August. That's the price you pay for no money down. So that's my story. Time for the answers to all the questions I had when I first inquired with Solar Holler. Is solar a smart investment? Here's a fun fact. In 2005, West Virginia had the lowest average residential electricity retail price in the nation, according to U.S. Energy Information Administration data. By 2020, West Virginia wasn't even among the lowest third of states nationwide in that category. West Virginia ratepayers endured a 90% increase in average residential electricity retail price over that 15 years. Only Michigan had a greater increase by percentage. I can worry much less about things like this now. Okay, now you've got a battery in your basement. But how does that work? During the day, the power wall uses solar energy to charge itself up. Any excess solar goes to the power company for a credit on my monthly bill. If I'm not producing excess power from my solar panels, just enough to power the house, the power wall remains on standby. On a sunny day, the solar panels can power your home, charge your power wall, and sell excess energy to the power company. In the evening, the power you store during the day is discharged from the power wall to power your house. Here's some examples of how much power we use from our power wall, from solar, and from the grid during different days. Springtime is a great sample because the weather can vary greatly from day to day. I'll include the weather for each day so it's easier to see why certain results were produced. The self-powered percentages are driven by the weather on the previous day for the most part. What are the payments? My solar loan payment is $128 a month. Is that more than my monthly electric bills were before I got the panels? It's close. But since then, I've bought two full electric cars, so my consumption is up. Another consideration is the equity that I've added to my house. Part of that $128 goes towards a gain in equity every month. Is it suitable for my house or property? You should communicate with an installer to find out. Solar Holler is the company I went with, but if you want a power wall today, you'll need to go straight to Tesla. And there are dozens of others like Energy Pal that can help you find installers for your area. Don't try Energy Pal in West Virginia. They don't have any information, but I think they can help you find resources in almost every other state in the continental U.S. When does it pay for itself? 
This is tough, most likely five to 15 years. That's a rough estimate. And thousands of factors like weather in your area, price increases on electrical costs, the real estate market in your area, interest rates, roof repairs, etc., can affect that time frame. So I got a tax credit. Does that mean you can get one too? Here's the federal incentives right now. In 2022, there is a 26% refund. In 2023, that amount drops to 22%, and it phases out completely for 2024. This could definitely change with new legislation, but that's how it is now. Okay, I've been waiting long enough. Why not roof panels? The ground panels are no maintenance. As long as they're functioning properly, they'll just work. Additionally, my roof doesn't have a lot of years left on it, so soon I'll need to buy a new one. Another reason for ground panels is if and when my roof does need fixed or replaced, I don't have to pay someone to come and take the panels off only to immediately remount them after my new roof is installed. If you can sell excess solar power back to the power company, why a power wall and not just more solar? As of right now, I would like my next set of panels to be a solar roof. But because of the area of the country I live in and the complexity of my roof, I don't believe I'm ready yet because prices are too high and the technology is too new. Another reason to get the power wall is it hedges against predatory legislation, which did recently happen in Florida, by the way. If net metering in my state goes away, the power wall provides a way to continue to get value from the solar energy I can't use in real time by storing it for later use instead of only having the option to sell it back to the grid. Also, I have the peace of mind to know I still have power during an outage. If your power wall discharges at night, how do you have backup for a power outage during the day? The answer? You set your power wall to keep a certain state of charge all the time, not only to maintain the health of the battery, but to give you some backup. For me, it's somewhere in the teens, and it gives me four to five hours of backup charge at the lowest state I would have it set to. How much electricity are you expected to produce? I was expected to produce 5,044 kilowatt hours during this rolling 12 months. Three quarters of the way through the reporting year, I'm at 5,234 kilowatt hours, and at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, that's over 500 bucks in savings already. We spoke about the warranty, but it's worth mentioning again, 25 years on the parts, 10 years on the labor. Was it an easy process? I've told my story, and you can be the judge on your own. Let me know if it sounded easy in the comments. Do I have any regrets? Absolutely not. So you think technology, electronics, where are the panels made? China? My solar array panels were made in the USA, and so was the Powerwall. Is solar a smart investment? Let's just say it's a hedge against future price changes, it's peace of mind during an outage, and it's added equity to your home. For the do's and don'ts, I wanna keep this really simple. Do as much research as you can. Don't make a decision until you know what your goal is. Do contact several parties to see what your options are, and don't listen to social media. I think this applies to all people all the time, in fact. Don't, don't listen, listen to, to social, social media. media. So, what questions do you have? Make sure to leave all your questions down below. I'll do the best I can to answer them all in a timely manner. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I can't explain to you how much I appreciate it. Subscribe for more updates as this system is new to me and I will keep you updated as all of the information I get comes to me. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I did this for myself and all the benefits I get from solar, but I also did it for you so you can make more informed decisions. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Also, I'm launching a West Virginia EV Owners Facebook group. Once it goes live, I'll put a link in the description. Make sure to sign up. Let's help West Virginia EV owners connect. You thought I forgot the giveaway, didn't you? Absolutely not. My solar hauler install came with a Nest Thermostat E Pro digital thermostat, and it's not compatible with my system. So I'm gonna give it away. Once I get to 25 patrons at $3 a month, I'm gonna give away this Nest thermostat. And I think I'm gonna give something away every 25 patrons. So make sure you sign up, patreon.com slash a slash 304. See you next time. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you. Da -da 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 -da. Yep.